I'm Robert Raw. Welcome to the Regional Anesthesia Study Centre of Iowa, or REST. Landmark-based nerve blocks are blind techniques. They utilize surface anatomy to identify the position to insert the needle, the, di the direction to advance the needle, and the plane within which to redirect the needle if successful final needle tip position is then confirmed by elicitation of paresthesia or muscle contraction. Best landmark based nerve block techniques rely as much as possible on fixed bony reference points that are consistent in position between all patients. One should avoid landmarks that are subject to inter-individual variation or to uncertain interpretation. A, a regional anesthesia standard hand size is 7.5 centimeters across four fingers. But this is a very convenient measurement basis for many different surface landmark based nerve blocks. Some blocks use a portion of that distance such as three fingers or two fingers breadth. Adapt the rules to your own hand size. This is an axial sectional view of the neck through the level of the fifth cervical vertebrae. The brachial plexus lies lateral to the bony intervertebral foramen and in a space between two muscles, scalenus anterior and scalenus medius. This interscaling space lies just underneath the posterior margin of the superficial lying sternocleidomastoid muscle. If the patient rotates their head to the opposite side, Typically, the sternocleidomastoid muscle will slide around to anterior, letting this interscaling groove come to lie subcutaneous. In this image, the skin has been removed, and the brachial plexus is seen lying two millimeters behind the phrenic nerve, one centimeter in front of the dorsal scapular nerve, and two centimeters in front of the accessory nerve. See the interscaling brachial plexus lying in the interscaling groove between the medial and the anterior scalene muscles. In this image, a broken yellow line has been drawn along the posterior margin of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The lower white line is parallel to the clavicle as viewed here. The upper white line is drawn through the cricoid cartilage parallel to the first, where the second white line intersects with the yellow line is the point for the nerve block needle to be inserted according to classical teaching. This however has been inconsistent with success. This is because the position of the cricoid cartilage can vary from the C4 level to the C6 level. It has also been shown that simply drawing the second white line two fingers above the clavicle is very consistent with success. This works in necks of all sizes and lengths. It is also useful in children and very large adults where their own two fingers can be used as the reference distance above the clavicle. The two finger rule thus becomes a reliable universal rule. Um, we don't do many nerve blocks without um, ultrasound anymore and I only teach it to people who are going to move to circumstances where they won't work with ultrasound. You can have the patient lie supine on the back, uh, head turned away from you. Identify the posterior margin of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So that's the margin I'm going to mark. too high. So I like to use bony points as reference points because they're more consistent. I just happen to know a two finger breadth is kind of perfect. So I'm resting my hand on her clavicle. I'm measuring two fingers above her clavicle. And you'll notice it's a little bit lower than the one I calculated by classic prediction. Someone can have a short neck or a long the very the variation in length is above this level. Length varies at the bottom. It's also handy for children. 
If I'm going to do an interscaling block on a five-year-old kid, I will take the child's hands, I'll approximate what two fingers of the child are, and I'll use that measurement. Uh, you'll notice here she's got an external jugular vein crossing right through the point where I wish to do the block. Uh, that is fairly, fairly consistent, but don't regard that as a landmark. The external jugular vein is very variable. Do not advance your needle through alcohol wet flesh. Flesh, because the alcohol burns like. Okay, here comes a little mosquito. And you don't want to inject too deep. You don't want to block accidentally, block accidentally with the lidocaine, which will stop you identifying. Try to avoid a too intracutaneous injection. They actually burn more and they hurt more. Now the next thing is direction of needle. Um, classic Winnie approach is perpendicular to the skin in all planes. Uh, it's, uh, it's been realized that's a high risk approach to put a needle through the transverse intervertebral foramen, especially if you come this way. So there's been a trend in recent years to bring the needle in increasingly at a diminishing uh, angle. The trouble with that is it can fail to penetrate the fascias lying there. Lying there brachial plexus and the failure rate of blocks goes up quite. Um, I just modify my needle approach very fractionally. Um, I puncture perpendicular through skin. I come through skin. I'm going to angle and I think I'm slightly posterior with my approach and I'm going to advance slowly. Typically, just before you get to, typically, just before you get, uh, as you go through these circum, overlying fascia um, over the plexus. Now we've really got a deltoid twitch at 1.9, and I went straight into the plexus. Straight dial it down. Okay, okay point 0.4. You definitely, you definitely want to twitch under point 0.5. Any twitch over point 0.5, you're potentially on the wrong side of a fascial barrier. Check your drug, get out and go home. All procedures in this educational material are filmed on healthy volunteers receiving actual needle insertions during our regular educational courses. If you wish to attend a rescue hands-on course and ultrasound guided, regional anesthesia, please book via our website or email us.